Hi guys, it's month six of Prompt Squad. I can't believe it's already been half a year. So this month's prompt was suggested by Nadia and it was illustrate a quote. I think last month I mentioned that I thought this was a really interesting idea, but I think the level of difficulty was a bit hidden until you started doing it, <laughs> or at least that was my experience. But before going into that, let's see all the wonderful eyes who took part in this month's prompt. First we have Emily of Little E Illustrations, who created a beautiful watercolour painting. Inspired by the Walt Disney quote, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. What I love about her piece is that she's mixed watercolour with the chameleon markers in a way that creates this almost pastel-like shaded texture. It really makes me think of the traditional Disney style in their films, but I can still see her style coming through too at the same time. And I also really like how the quote has been incorporated into the illustration. For having it flow through it, it does feel part of it rather than separate, which I think is really hard to do personally, so well done on that. Next we have Kai, who depicted Bruce Lee's quote, be water my friend, which if you know Kai just makes a world of sense. I think it's a really clever take on the quote because it's speaking of being adaptable and malleable towards your surroundings. And so in his illustration, he's taken the portrait of Bruce Lee that he's done and then changed the style to match and mix with the different backgrounds he's created. I'm also really enjoying his move into GIF animation with his art, so I really hope he'll continue with that in his future pieces. I'm just heavy hinting there, Kai. Nadia's illustration took on the quote, good people are like candles, they burn themselves up to give others light. And what I really love about her work, just in general, but you can see it in this art especially, is how she always finds ways to illustrate her message concisely. In this piece, you can quickly relate to the quote and the emotions that are within it through the colours and the posing of it. It's always got a lot of heart. And yeah, so that's everyone's take on the prompt illustrator quote this month. Now I'll go into what I did, and at the end I'll reveal what next month's prompt is. So I hope you'll stick around till the end. Okay, so I had a nightmare with this prompt, as I said earlier. I got a load of my favourite books out and I was flicking through them a bit but I was really struggling to find something that gave me this image in my head. So I ended up leaving it down to the wire and a few days before the deadline, I was a bit panicked and I tried to ignore it by settling down and reading the book that I've just been reading at night anyway. And I ended up finding a quote there. So I've been reading Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings and to be fair, I feel like I could have taken any sentence out of this book as it's got to be one of the most beautifully written things that I've ever read. As painful as it can be to read sometimes, but the quote I worked from was from there and it was Hoping for the best, prepared for the worst and unsurprised by anything in between. And I really felt a connection to that line because it's pretty much how I feel about my outlook on life too and kind of how I imagine most people see their lives or at least how they hope to. I also thought it's just a good way to view the problems that you face just in life by showing optimism towards what could go well, by showing acceptance towards what could go wrong, and then by maintaining a scepticism towards the rest. I think that's a really healthy way to be. And so when I approached this illustration, I wanted a character that could tell that story and show all three of those parts. So immediately I was thinking about the rain and a girl holding up an umbrella because to me that's preparing for the worst. And so for that character, I tried to think of a scene that she could find herself in. I knew I wanted her to be discovering something and to approach it willingly because the feeling that I've gotten from this whole book was this kind of beautiful courage and just strength of character. And so I wanted this character to embody that too. And so from there, as I've been loving to paint Nickel Matters recently, I ended up sketching a black cat as the subject. And finally, I hope that through dull colours and then rising up to lighter colours, the overall feeling of the image could be something more hopeful. It's not this guaranteed, like, bright, happy image. It's got to be more gentle than that. More like a light on the horizon level of happiness, not the sun's already up. You know, you don't know the day that you're going to end up getting. So that was the thought process behind the illustration itself. When it came to the painting, I knew I wanted to continue the current non-line art style that I've been favouring. I didn't want the shapes to feel too sharp. I almost wanted a misty effect, at the very least, through the background. So what I did was I layered some really thin washes of watercolour and then just let them build up very gradually to give that effect. So when that looked how I was hoping, I started adding more built-up layers of gouache that's mainly because it has a bit more substance and I could add more contrast to the painting overall with it. Though I didn't do it in this piece as much, I usually do a preliminary sketch of what I've got an idea of. And then I build up a second sketch where I'm just blocking out blacks and whites so I get a good feel of the values in the piece. 
maybe that's a little hard to explain or visualize, but if you are interested, I was thinking it could be fun to show how I'm approaching art pieces at the moment, because I do find that the process that I take does change over time. And maybe showing all those different stages behind a final piece of art could be interesting. So if you would find that interesting, please comment down below if you'd like to see it. And so this ended up being a much more graphical piece than I'd usually go for, but I'm kind of glad I didn't force more detail into it when I don't think it was altogether necessary. I think going back to basic shapes is helping me visualize characters a lot more differently. And I hope it's gonna lead to more and more consistency in my art overall. I know that might not sound altogether like a positive for an artist to strive for, but for me it's something I've been hoping to achieve for a long time now. Experimenting has been a really good way to work my way back into art after such a long hiatus before you know, I started this channel and started doing it again. But now I'm beginning to find that the subjects that I love to paint now, rather than used to love to paint, and yeah, I'm just hoping for the best that this is going to continue to grow and get better. So that was it for this month's Prompt Squad. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to take part in next month's Prompt Squad and have your art featured at the beginning of the video, the prompt for next month is design a Pokemon, suggested by Emily. All you have to do is create a piece of art, any style, any medium, it's all up to you. And it just has to be a response to that prompt. Upload it onto here or Instagram and I'll make sure to feature it in next month's video. If you found some art that you love in this video, please check out all the wonderful artists who took part. And if you have an idea for a future prompt that we could all take on, make sure to leave a suggestion down in the comments. Now the deadline for this prompt is going to be the 24th of June and the video will probably come out on the 25th, but I'll put it up as a premiere so hopefully you'll see it before then. Thank you as always for watching and for taking part. I'll see you again in a month's time for next month's Prompt Squad.